Oh yeah. All right, I'm going to try something. External audio effect. So I saw Mr. Bill, actually I heard it on a podcast thing, talking about this, that, let's see, can you just take audio from audio to Okay, we could do that for side chaining. All right, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do my old standard side chaining method which is just to make a second MIDI channel and have the input let's rename this And over here is where I'll put my ducking plug-in, which is called duck. And it's going to look for MIDI from here. Cool. So now when there's a kick, So that it's a sixteenth note for now. I'm just making 16 bar idea um, sections going for like the drop or whatever of, of a new tune. So I think I always feel like that's a better chance of getting a finished tune if I work on the like main thing first. Because if you can get that, or if I can get that, then it's pretty easy to build up to it and make an intro and uh, variations and stuff. But if I can't, like if for instance, I start with an intro, then I can get locked into, well, now I have to come up with like the thing 
that I'm introducing and maybe I can't. So I always just start with that, that to determine whether I have anything or not. And instead of getting really committed into one thing, I work on one section and if I get tired of it, I just quickly like copy the drums over and or copy the whole thing and delete one's you know, maybe the bass line out and try something else. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So on this one, I'll just delete that. I'll actually try it to hold a totally different um, instrument. But I'm going to use... operator again so I'll just delete delete the MIDI from here and I'll just start using this one what I have is an operator with a saturator and a utility making the bass mono and kind of the mids really wide um, this envelope follower is triggering the frequency of this erosion, so it moves around. Um, I can hold on. There. It's all right. Um, And then a couple of glue compressors just to make it louder and smash it down a little bit. Um, but I'm going to change the character of the operator itself, um, mess around with that until I get something I like, and then try to get a new 16-bar loop going on here. Or maybe it's 8 bars. Am I doing 8 bars or 16 bars? Looks like 8 bars. Doesn't matter. I can idea I have ideas already which just makes for how I know it's a good it's a good idea to follow as if I if it gives me another idea then that's the one to keep going 
Whoop. So I need another another cool sound there. Um, I'm being paranoid, but I'm just gonna make sure I'm like collecting all. Maybe I'll do another operator thingy. No, I'm gonna go looking for a fun sample to, to, to play. So I'm gonna go looking in some recent download things. Let's see. I got it sorted by dates modified so I can see kind of what's the most recent things. Okay, maybe, maybe. Because what I'm trying to do here is not really looking for that sound literally necessarily, but if I put it in a sampler and really mangle it a bit. Yeah, something like this. Kind of going where I was imagining here. I'm going to get it louder and more. Gonna keep that one and keep moving. Less is more. But that's a cool sound I can keep here, so maybe I'll group it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
sounds let's get some more sounds yeah that noise is always super good let's just bring some in right now <laughs> Oh wow, yeah, I got a lot of... Skateboard. I'm gonna bring that into a simpler... And pop it in slice mode. I don't just sit there and enjoy the loop for too long because then I'll just get sick of it. So I got to keep layering up stuff and make sure I save as, as opposed to just saving over the top. Save as, if you know me, that's my thing because you could somehow things could go wrong and it's nice to go back one chapter as opposed to being screwed or having to go back really, really far or something like that. So. Oh, I wonder what not, not those type of Too much. 
All right, let's make more synths from scratch. How about something I haven't messed with in a long time, like like Serum, believe it or not. I haven't actually almost never used it lately. Let's do it. these UFO sounds in addition to the All right, let me just get this little idea in there and then we'll add that we'll add that stuff. Thank <laughs> you. 
pushing that and then I'm going to like strip away all the clutter and try to make a couple versions of this vibe that are really tight all of a sudden let's see and I'm taking suggestions so I'm watching the chat um Yeah, definitely still using um, lots of live drums and playing drums every day and kind of getting the recording of that better. I got a, some compressor stuff, um, secondhand, like a bus compressor for the drum rack and um, got the whole rig up so that it's right next to my uh, seating position so I can just really tweak, you know, and like keep listening. And I got a couple of cymbals, so it's like expanding um and i really like i like how the sloppy live drums kind of like give the whole programmed thing instant vibe and then i can kind of go off of that and then diminish like i'll i'll eq this way down and like move into kind of more um other sounds on top of it but it makes for a good template and i've already um extracted the groove from that beat so like for instance let's see if i put it on some stuff if it starts feeling <laughs> like 
like if there's a percussion part or something, I'll I'll sync it up to the beat. <laughs> some stuff down. duplicate the whole thing. Thank <laughs> you. 
Make a new bass thing from scratch with um, another serum because that was easy the first time. And I haven't used it much, even though it's like the thing that everybody's used to death. I have been doing other stuff. just the reverb filter doing weird things. Yeah, that's some real noise. It's just adding its own weird crazy. same key. Not do the other things in any kind of key. It's not in any kind of key. Fight my urge, which is to like play it all over the place and just do it like every once in the thing. Let's see if I can pull that. It's not the timing though. Let me try one more time. Like, I'm hearing like something cool on the one, but maybe get rid of those, that first hit. Let's see, where's that? This. So, like, just 
one of those. Some other crazy sound here. Conversations. I want to have more musical conversations with that. So it goes. <laughs> It just sounds like a fart, so it does. I'm not really kidding. I'm not to use that. Because even though it sounds good on its own, it's just going to be like, what? Who did that? <laughs> Weird folder now. Okay. Sometimes I just like to search something strange. Um, Because I have such a big uh, library, and it just kind of brings up stuff by name in the all results I have to do that right now. What am I really looking for? Some... Vengeance. <laughs> All right, now this isn't that how it's too random. I'm gonna go looking through my sample library from stuff that I actually thought was cool. Sound. 
too Ooh. mellow. I always want to put a mellow thing in, but I don't think this song is, is going there. starting to to move duplicate that and then just start messing with this and of course hit the save as alfalfa source that's where we're going here <laughs> Really quick, I'm going to make a copy of this and cruise over and make a minimal version here. Let me get rid of that answer. make that happen less often because it's annoying. Thank <laughs> you. 
something new with some of these sounds I haven't like found my favorite thing yet which is fine because in the end it's cool to have a bunch of stuff to if be if well if you can be decisive to go through and just like re remash like oh that's cool that's cool that's cool to throw away the rest and then go from there and you can end up with something pretty spontaneous feeling I've learned is that if it takes that long to edit something that's not even that clear of an idea, then it's wasting my time. It's either better to play it, right? Just play it or move on to something that isn't a struggle for whatever reason. I mean, barring that if I hear the bass line like in more in my head, like if I'm like, that's what I'm working on, then I'll put that kind of effort into it. But if it's just me goofing around, I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I can't make it work kind of in three to five minutes, then garbage. I'm going to put my kick drum thing back in over here. to a new sound. One of the things was that wasn't in the wasn't in the sidechain group. But I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna try something else. Diva.
I think Dave is my favorite. <laughs> What you're hearing is the poly brute in the back here, um, which is new in my world here. Let me see if I can. Oh yeah, I'll stay in more in Diva. Let's mess around with Diva. I didn't know if anyone was paying attention to that. But I also want to show off the Polybrute, the Arturia Polybrute hardware that I have at some point in this session. Um, but the Diva is totally um, my favorite in terms of uh, analog-ness. You know, it really sounds like an analog synth. And the way that it is set up is like um, it has um, a Moog architecture and a, and a kind of like a Roland uh, Juno architecture as well. So if you go into this world over, let's see, where am I going to demonstrate this? Oh, yeah, cool. So like there's these templates and you can initialize the um, Juno 60, Jupiter 6, Jupiter 8, Mini Moog, and these kind of things which approximate like the oscillators and filters that, that would be there for that. So that's so cool. And I didn't realize that for, I mean, I think I might have had this, well, since it came out. So it might be 10 years or something crazy like that. Um, but if I go into like the Jupiter 8 world, it gives me just a kind of blank slate Jupiter 8 type um, architecture. So then I could, let's see. Here, I'll show you some results. Because I made some pads and stuff. Um, a super um, dreamy analog thing to it that I haven't found in a lot of other VSTs. Yeah, it's like being at the planetarium, but it with like, I always picture the planetariums more twinkly, like, like the sounds that are in um, absinthe or something like that, you know, like little chimes over the top. And this has got none of that kind of digital over 
tone world. You know, it's kind of like it's similar to the uh, the the poly brute uh, over here. is a really really cool synth with like tons of control stuff but it's more planetarium stuff see what kind of like I haven't really looked at into the presets for bass yeah they like that kind of got some so yeah I really it, its thing is really the analog uh, sound like a hardware and one of my favorite sound designers that I've pretty much I've used like tons of his presets throughout the history of my production um, is Howard Scar. And he does them for Diva and he does a bunch of them for the uh, Access Virus TI that I have. And I have like a few banks and they're all the sickest. And he's wizard total wizard grade uh preset maker and i've like you know um customized a bunch of them but they're always like the borderline of corny kind of but not you know because in my taste because they still are like dirty and analog and they're not all 100 percent but they're dope though It's the joint. You missed the point. It's the joint. That stuff. Do that, Beastie Boys. Thing. I lost what whatever sound that. Was. It's like the liquid D and B vibe right away.
No. I get the uh, rim shots thing going here too. Let's see. Let's see if that works. We first add this to the. That'll do. Just want to get to see if I get this little pattern in here. 
fast. Try this at home. Let's see, check, check. things so let's see the versions and I'm really just looking for a sample I'm just gonna throw in the sampler so maybe that's all I'll do before I even get too nervous about how it sounds take the whole thing and put it in a new Phaser thingy, that's the new. Oh, where did it go? It's flanger phaser. That'll do it. that long of it I'm just gonna pop it into like a delay but I just want to make sure it has the right kind of
clumsy in there. I think it's the drum. <laughs> I think it should be one of those tight little, obviously one of those drum and bass kind of snares. Oh, I'm just trying to capitalize you. Let's see if there's some, because that's kind of stuff I've been downloading, so let's see if I found some. Oh, that's my... Maybe. Yeah. Just perhaps. That's the one. Shift Command M. C. Thank you. 
a woodpecker. like some other stuff at double time maybe i can make sense out of that one <laughs> that just sounds ridiculous oh. yeah <laughs> i like that i like it too so i'm laughing my face off but it's like it's like um ridiculous which is why i like it so much let's just listen to it <laughs> they don't go together anymore that's not something that could happen but I, I can like take some of the cool stuff <laughs> This, this feels like where the the thing's at. So I'm going to, um, instead of jump in with the drums right there, I'm going to make them come in right here.
that's kind of like in the same vein here. Let's see if I can pitch that. Sounds kind of cool for some reason. but like just the the sound of that chord chords that sound really cool. Hold on. Where the hell is this? Be? I'm just going to record some shakers. Because, you know, why use a loop here? Hold on. Audio in from this mic I'm using for my vocals. Um, all right, there it is. We'll call this Shakes. One second. And, and keep doing it until I get just enough to loop and go, you know, just use the good stuff and not use the me trying to get the groove. But it takes me a few shakes to get in there. Mm 
It's all been too sloppy, but maybe there's just a little bit in here. It's hard to play that fast for me. Something nice to kind of keep the shakers from getting too abrasive is to just bring in like the notch filter a little bit. background thing and throwing it off Thank you. 
think that kick that goes ba boom is too weird. But I like it, but I'm gonna put it on pause. <laughs> That one's okay though. There's something weird in there too. It's like doom doom doom.
tangled up in my headphones. That's the Arturia Poly Brute that I've been playing. I got that um, for my 50th birthday this summer. I'll be paying that off for a long time. There were some excessively shrill frequencies in there that that I just tamed with, or I'm taming with Soothe 2, which is like always useful. Expected place to end up.
I'm going to do a, like maybe a couple more layers and then um, take a break or call it for the night. Maybe come back or maybe not. But I'm going to start doing this kind of more regularly. So, you know, you see me popping up. I'm going to be making beats for it kind of keeps me um, active. Like I can think of, you know, things to distract myself if I'm uh, not streaming. You know, sometimes I can just like. I'm going to go in the backyard for a minute or walk my dog, um, which is all good stuff to do. But I am in the mood to, like, write beats. Yeah, it turned into a Garage UK kind of drum and bass or, like, liquid drum and bass kind of thing. It started off as a wompy. Here, let's see if it even holds together back here if I change the tempo. This is 164. <laughs> That's funny devil time. It was, like, a 80, 90 or something. It was like uh, Danny Breaks, yeah, old, real old school kind of wobble stuff. And I still want to work on something like that too. But then it morphed somehow. <laughs> Thanks, man. Big ups to you. Um, but anyway, let's check out back to the uh, little garage moment thing experiment. It's always funny, just like American producers trying to make authentic UK style beats. It's like um, super fun and challenging, but really, really hard for me to. I mean, over the years, I've learned some of the things that make a, a, a fast tune work better, like short drum hits as opposed to the big old chunky things from halftime music. checking out whole bass music culture uh documentaries from like uk dub in the 70s sound system sound clash stuff so cool and that's really where so much of uh so much of the underground dance music stuff and the west coast kind of whole thing is is i think comes from some of that so i love like checking that out just like gangs of like a like a crew that has a truck and builds speaker boxes all week for the party and then like you know wires it all up and, and there's two or three sound systems and and they and they trade it's like a giant b2b with in separate sound installations and they you know i just think that's such a cool i mean that's a lot of stuff to carry to the park and like get it generator and everything but it's so cool Let's see about my side chain thing here I'll make it a little slower a 
Oh, that's cool. You saw Goldie at Fabric. That's dope. That sounds like some really classic experience. Yeah, and the MCs are uh, a crazy phenomenon. That, to be honest, I I would feel like I it bugged me when I first started listening to like, you know, in the early like two thousand six seven when I listened to some dubstep mixes that I was getting from UK and there was so much MCing over the top. But it's the it's the part of the the party, you know. It's something that I kind of got a slight appreciation for over time but it's not something i would put in my thing but i totally dig it like i saw some videos of outlook festival just now and it's just like killer mcs over bass music all tempos all right just for fun i'm gonna throw some kind of plugins on the master bus here to see how this thing sounds a little bit hotter a little faux master quickie here let's see how fast i can
Sometimes it can take it, sometimes it can't. The second bus compressor with the mid side on it. That's because I have everything a little too hot. But for a quick master, I like it like this so far. Cool, saving now again, save as version 12. So that seems silly, but it's not because if I, I could go back as many steps as I need to, if I ever need to, and that's not a lot of extra stuff to save. But um, how much time of a tune is that? That's like from a minute 40 to so like it's like a minute and a half that's cool so I can another day I can make that into a full-fledged tune um, collect all and save which makes sure all those samples that I use that are randomly on my hard drives go into this folder which is really important um, cool all right hey thanks for hanging I'm gonna come back and do this more often so if you see me uh, on here come and hang out and i'm always happy to answer questions or chat um thanks have a good day or night <laughs>